Hello and welcome to this British Library food season event sponsored by KitchenAid. I'm Polly Russell, the season's founder and curator, and I am thrilled to be here in London today at the beautiful KitchenAid Experience Store for one of three events with contemporary chefs cooking and conversing with the living food legends who have inspired them. Today, we are honored to welcome Elizabeth Luard and Olia Hercules. Elizabeth is a food writer who has lived and worked in Spain, Italy, France, and Latin America. She's written more than 20 cookery books, including Flavors of Andalusia and European Peasant Cookery, which are as much recipe books as they are explorations of culture, folklore, and history. Besides cookery writing, Elizabeth has written two novels, four memoirs, and has been writing a cookery column for the Old E magazine for 16 years. A talented artist, Elizabeth's writing is often accompanied by her evocative illustrations. Given her expansive and generous approach to understanding food, it's no surprise perhaps that Elizabeth is the chair of the Oxford Symposium of Food and Cookery, an organization dedicated to expanding the culinary conversation. Elizabeth won the 2016 Guild of Food Writers Lifetime Achievement Award, is most definitely a legend, and it is wonderful to have her here today with Olia Hercules. Olia was born in the Ukraine and lived in Cyprus before moving to the UK to study English, Italian and Russian. After working for a time as a reporter for Screen International, her interest in food led her to retrain as a chef. Following training, she worked as a chef de party in restaurants, including Ottolenghi, before landing a book deal for Mamushka, a cookery book that celebrates her family's recipes from Ukraine and Moldova to Azerbaijan. Her most recent book, Summer Kitchen, came out last year. Now, in a moment, I'll hand over to Elizabeth and Olia, but I'd like to mention the other legends in this series. Claudia Rodin with Itamar Shrulevich and Sarit Packer, and Jill Norman in conversation with Rosie Sykes. Now, finally, if you would like to support the work of the British Library, you'll find a donate button on your screen. There's also a feedback button, and we're always very keen to hear from you. Please do join us for other British Library food season events. To find out more, visit the food season page on the website. On this page, you'll also find details of the food season competition we're running, which gives you a chance to win a wonderful range of KitchenAid cordless appliances, a place on a virtual cooking course, and a signed copy of Callum Franklin's terrific book, The Pie Room. So finally, thank you to Elizabeth and Olia. We'll be posting their recipes on the website and thank you also to KitchenAid for hosting. Over to you. Thank you. I can't even describe how elated I feel to be here with you <laughs> for so many reasons. I'm going to start making these dumplings and then we're, we're just going to chat through. Um, remember the first time that we met, which was... Yeah, yeah, Ballymaloo. I can't remember what the date was, but it, it was, was a good maybe five years ago. Something like, something that, like that. Yeah, I still remember. I Well... Shamefully, I didn't really know your work for some obscure reason, but uh, I saw the description of your talk and I remember going into that church. It was a beautiful little church, I think, or a chapel. And I just sat there and you spoke. And I remember I was writing my second cookbook at the moment, at that time. And I was going through this really weird writer's block. I, I was really lost with it all. I don't know why, I can't remember. It was a difficult period. And your words, you just spoke with such clarity, I think, about the sun and its connection to vegetables. And um, I don't know, you just inspired me so much. Um, you completely unblocked me. I, after that, I just, I just went back home and I, and I finished the book and it felt so natural and effortless. And of course, you know, I found you that evening, and well, I feel like we've become friends. We're really then. good friends, and I very <laughs> actually I knew your work because you were writing about in very close to the area that interests me, which is about landscape and people and why people do what they do, and that um, pretty much we're dictated in our traditions by where we live, and yeah. we can't even though we can now import masses of things, we don't really move out of it. So what you have there is, um, it's a dumpling recipe for a wedding. And I filmed it very close to where you come from. Um, Western in about, Ukraine? Yeah, the, doing good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> about um, in, I think it was probably 1991, 92, on the Ukrainian border. 
And there were Ruthenes there who were marooned in um, Slovakia after um, the curtain came down after the Second World War. I and saw that episode and it's absolutely incredible. It, it was a wonderful thing to do and it was really lucky because the wedding was going on anyway. So it wasn't set up or anything. They just said, oh, do you want to come to a wedding? And because I use a sketchbook and a paint box, um, I tend to be welcome. It's a little tiny sketchbook. And um, it's a nice breaker, isn't it? It's uh, so people can see what, what I'm doing and what they are and become much more welcoming than they probably are with a camera. So um, the wedding, the poppy seed dumplings, um, they're just interesting because they're made for weddings. They're sweet. They've got sugar. And the poppy seeds, which are used in huge quantities in Eastern Europe, yeah. I mean, not little tiny bits like, like that. <laughs> the little sprinkling. A little yeah. tiny pinch. No, not at all. They're, and you can see them in markets um, in the autumn. You know, great big piles yeah. of them laid Small out. Small mountains, yeah. yes. And they're um, high protein, I think. They're oily as well. So yeah. they give you everything you need. And when I lived in Wales, I used to gather the little, um, the Welsh poppies, which are yellow. I used to gather the, the poppy seeds from there. What's that process like? Is it quite... Just shake it out. It's really? really easy. Yes. Oh, I need to try that. <laughs> You've probably got poppies in your garden, haven't you? I do, actually, yes. yes. <laughs> yes when I, when, I think Olia came to my flat in London when I'd moved from Wales, and um, she arrived with a big basket <laughs> of that you'd collected in your... Um, the, your garden or the allotment, the, the decay. allotment, and it was kind of late in the season, so everything was quite overgrown, wasn't it? <laughs> yes, including Penny Royal. Yes, which is a uh, it's a uh, used a lot in Spain, but usually with snails. Yeah. So um, I don't know why it is. I think it's mildly, um, it's digestive. It's probably um, you know kills little bits that you might not want in there and things like that. And I used to collect snails. So all my work, in a way, is it's very much like yours. And I can understand why um, it appealed to you. Because we're talking very much the same language. And your new book, which is completely Summer Kitchens, where um, you know, you're talking about ex the northern version of what was going on in my life in Andalusia. So right. it was yes, such a, so many similarities. Yeah, a lot of similarities. So. I mean, we all learn from each other. I'm going to watch you. Look at that. Look at the So it still looks a little action. bit rough, but we're going to leave it. And, you know, people are so scared of dough. But, you know, just leave it for a bit. It will relax. And then when I need it again, it will just be smooth, 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 as if, as if by magic. Uh, but let's go back to your traveling, to that trip, please, and many other <laughs> trips, because that is an extraordinary series. Can you tell me how it all came about? And I didn't think anybody the... would publish a book called European Peasant Cookery, but I wanted to call it European Peasant Cookery because that was what it was. Because the word peasant in the UK has a sort of, you know, you don't want to be that. But um, throughout most of Europe, everybody, you know, it's, it's a thing that you're proud of being. And I came to it because when I lived in Andalusia with my children, they all went to school on donkey back and they learnt, I mean, they were still threshing wheat, growing wheat, threshing wheat yep. with a, a donkey. And um, my son went to the local school, which was all ages in the same building. And um, wow. he came back and I said, what have you been doing today? And he said, well, I'm not going to tell you, as sort of seven-year-olds, eight-year-olds do. And then after a bit, he said, OK, I'll tell you. Um, this is what we did. We set traps for rabbits in the, in the lettuce patch. And then we caught a rabbit, and we skinned the rabbit, and we made a stew with the rabbit. So I thought, OK, you know, the sort of childhood that, that you're getting is something that's going to disappear, because actually it's incredibly hard work. You know, the sort of a, a self-sufficient way of life of in a valley in Andalusia, which I had to learn all sorts of things. You know, they said, you're throwing rubbish, you know, you're throwing kitchen stuff away. You shouldn't be doing that. You should keep a pig. So I said, OK, <laughs> you know, um, if you tell me how to do this thing and if you come and help me, a pig is killed at one year old, yeah. as you know, because it must be in your area as well. 
Yes. Did you get a pig? Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah we well, call it Piggy. Um, <laughs> and um, it was really quite... Um, was it, I mean, in a way, it was traumatic because we weren't used to it. But I kept rabbits. So, you know, the idea that meat is something that somebody else isn't responsible for yeah. was really very keenly felt in the area. Um, women were responsible for anything smaller than a goose. So you had to kill a goose if you bought one at Christmas. And you had to be taught by the baker's wife who sold you the goose how to do it. She said, I'll, I'll do it once, and then, you know, you've got to know how to do it. So that was a sort of, I mean, it was a kind of a knowledge of country, how to behave properly in the world. Yeah. And that you plant chickpeas and that you harvest them and that you plant garlic under the lemon tree because that will keep the black fly, all that kind of information. And um, how to deal with a pig, you know. I can deal with a whole pig sometime. <laughs> and um, so... So that was... was the basis. So I said, OK, I want to do European peasant cookery. This is the, what I want to call it. And I must have done quite a good proposal because I, I got enough to do the travelling. Have you been writing already or were you still an illustrator? Uh, yes, point? I had. I've been... Um, I had a... Well, I had a... I was a natural history artist. Yes. And I sort of added the writing to the fact that I could read a landscape. So... Um, I had a column in the field, which was, well, rabbits and things, you know, not actually pigs, but plenty of wild stuff, and th which suited me. And um, so I'd already maybe done a couple of years of that. And then, do you want to write a book? Yes, I want to write a book. This is what I want to call it. And, um, and then I had the gaps. I mean, I was OK in the UK. I was OK in Spain. I'm, good understanding around the Mediterranean, but I didn't have Eastern Europe and I didn't have Scandinavia. Yeah. So I went to the Oxford Symposium on food and cookery in, say, 1983, something, 84, something like that, and found people who said, oh, yes, we understand what you're talking about, you know, come to um, Norway and I'll tell you, I'll send you to see my um, daughter who lives up above the Arctic Circle. You don't need a lot That's of incredible. information. You just need somebody, and then they pass you on to somebody else. Yeah. So I did that in Eastern Europe, but I didn't get as far as Slovakia. I stayed within the Ottoman Empire, because I understood that, because it comes out of Turkey. So I did a long trip around Eastern Europe, um, looking in people's gardens, going to markets, using my sketchbook to ask people you know, what they were putting in things. Was it nutmeg? OK, I can draw a nutmeg. You know, how do you do it? What, what... So just quickly, very quickly mention what we've been doing here <laughs> because we can get carried away so easily. Um, so I've got some curd cheese, which, of course, you know, you can, you can buy it, but you can also just um, strain some yoghurt. Or in my case, I've just strained some kefir, actually, overnight in the muslin, and that works really well. Then we've got some poppy seeds. I've got some nutmeg, some salt and one egg and this is our filling and the dough here's the one that i made earlier we've got some eggs some water and some flour that's it it's just very simple very no, no simple machinery required no and of course it's so much nicer to roll everything out by hand as well but you know if somebody wants to use a pasta machine i always say it's not a problem at all we won't we won't judge you but this is a really nice kind of like a uh, very relaxing thing to do i find Yes, so and it's just... also something that people do at, at a wedding situation. Everybody will come and help. Yeah. So younger folk can see what the older folk are doing. So there's a transfer of information um, when it's not a catered thing. It's um, where we were filming and I collected this recipe. It was in a separate house, which was kept for weddings or... Um, events that the, the village wanted to celebrate, possibly even funerals, I don't know. It was just a general meeting house. Yeah. And there was a kitchen and there were maybe about 20 women in there. And they were all doing exactly the same thing and all talking to each other and exchanging news. Isn't it amazing? Yeah, it was great. Um, yeah, in my part of Ukraine, we do that when we make a wedding bread called korovai and tradition kind of... Um, 
says that it should be seven women and one of them, the leader, it's, you know, it's preferable that she's married and maybe with kids as well. So obviously you're just putting all of these positive vibes basically into your dough and passing all of that onto the bride, which is a really nice thing, I think. Would you like to do some shaping yeah, as well? I want to see okay. what you're doing. <laughs> okay, let me just have some. Um, so how was it traveling in Eastern Europe at that point in time as well? That was straight after the Berlin Wall came down? Yes, it, well, no, it was before or the just wall before. came down. And um, it was quite difficult actually, because you found yourself quite often um, in, in places where you've been followed by police cars. And uh, Romania particularly. I'm yeah, wow. Well. Um, <laughs> but on the other hand, because food is such a, it's sort of a universal thing, um, I think I need the long... Is there another one? Oh, yeah, wow, look at that. <laughs> I don't know where I got that. I bring stuff back from wherever I am. I love yours. That's a really no, nice thing. thank you. I think it's thing. an Italian one, a pasta one. Um, and how did you find fixers there? How did you find people who found you people um, at that point? I had a, a link in every place I went to. So in, um, <laughs> in Bucharest, I had a link with uh, um, American Spy for no good reason. Yes. Um, and <laughs> she was called Kiki, Kiki Munchi. So I think she... <laughs> She um, sent me to the places that she thought I would need to go to. Right. And, um, and once that was done, um, I mean, I knew she was a spy. I don't suppose anybody else did. Anyway, I wouldn't have cared. <laughs> and um, up in the Carpathians, um, sometimes there's an exchange if you want something from people. And it could just be a sketch. I mean, I've been invited to weddings. Bring your sketchbook and you can come. That's amazing. So um, that sort of worked. And these dumplings are from the Carpathians or not quite? These are from, um, well, the Slovakia in Slovakia. the High Tatras. Right, yeah. <laughs> Bears and wolves, that kind of thing. And, and, um, but so I didn't get there till I was filming. I didn't get there for the, the European peasant cookery. Okay. And did you witness the women making them? Yeah, yeah, yeah I did. And um, we filmed them, so I had to, to get the recipe. Yours is much bigger than mine. Did you give me a smaller piece? Or did you give me the maybe same I size? Get, maybe I'm rolling it up okay. a little bit I'm thinner. Maybe, is, is this too thin? No, it's perfect. Well, this is the first time that I make these. But if they are kind of similar, so would you, you call them piroshki in your, yeah. in your recipe? Yeah. Is that what they were called? Yeah. But they're boiled and not baked. They're boiled but not baked. That's interesting. Yeah. Um, I had a cutter somewhere. And here. I think the egg holds it together, you see. So that, that uh, matters. Hmm. Okay, I'm okay, now so going to do this. So this is our filling. Look how kind of fluffy now, if you're and gorgeous going to bake it is. It, yes. It, it'll be th as thick as that. If you're going to boil it, you can do it a bit thinner. Shall I, I do it thinner? A bit yes. Thinner. Yes, yeah. ma'am. I will definitely do it thinner. Um, and just boiled in salted water, yeah? Yeah. Just wait till they bob to the top, like ordinary dumplings. And of course, these are sweet. And, you know, I'm, I'm used to the idea of a sweet dumpling. We, we fill them with sour cherries and apricots and you name it, and also, you know, served with butter and sugar. But maybe for our audience, you know, that's an unusual thing. So when would they be served? Is it, are they served as a dessert or...? Now, let me think. I think they are. Yes, I think it was at, at the, the end. end of the meal. So yeah. they serve the same purpose as a wedding cake. Right. So, Amazing. And the fact they've got seeds in them is an indication that you should get on and procreate. Yes, as of really course. Really important. So straight. So before the Berlin Wall came down, you're in uh, all over in Romania, in, in Ukraine, Hungary, and in yeah. Hungary. And, and what were people? like you know what did they think of this tra uh, of this adventurer i don't know from england um, <laughs> you know i wasn't really thinking about that i mean i can go into a market and people the children will come and watch what i'm doing drawing yeah presumably yeah yes. i can take that out and show you what it looks like so basically what we do is we're just going to cut it uh roll roll it out into a bit of a sausage and then cut pieces and then we're going to roll each one into a you know rough circle right yeah okay sorry keep keep telling me about your 
um, about your travel, about your adventures. So market, drawing. So market, go to a market, find the market where, um, because I've done my homework, um, where the traditional midday meal is set out. It'll be beans, potatoes, veg. Right. Maybe a bit of meat, that kind of thing. Yeah. And then go and um, take out my sketchbook and um, the kids come round and they talk to me, whether I can talk to them back. Yeah. Um, I've got Spanish and French, pretty bad German, <laughs> and one of those will do, and if it doesn't, um, and I want to know if it's honey in something, I'll just go... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Or, and, it, I mean, it, it, it's not as difficult as it, you might think if you don't mind being an idiot, <laughs> which is all fine. Do you want another nice little sausage? Yeah. It's good. Are you gonna do? Are you gonna do I some as well? Know. Yeah, <laughs> maybe. I don't know. I don't know. I think you're my granny now. <laughs> yes, we're swapping roles. <laughs> yeah. So, and so markets. What were markets? What were the markets like? Um, there were wonderful markets in in U what was then Yugoslavia. Right. And it while we were travelling because I had my husband Nicholas with me, um, it changed throughout Yugoslavia and you could see that people were not doing the same thing with a cabbage and a bag of flour as they would have been doing in another part. So when, I, when I'd finished it, I had somebody, a native of wherever I was um, researching, right. tell me whether I'd made any enormous mistakes. I'd just send off, um, you know, the, the text. Yeah. And in Yugoslavia, um, I had a problem because I couldn't say there was a Yugoslavian way of cooking. Right. There was a Bosnian, there was a Kosovo, of there course. was a, you know, it, yep. it had divided into the seven groups it now is in. Yeah. I think it's in seven groups. So it was perfectly obvious that um, people were saying who they are by the way they were cooking. Yeah. And I think that remains true. You like doing that because that's what you're used to. Yeah. <laughs> and that works for you. So um, if I was in your kitchen, because you'd been invited, uh, you'd invited me, then that I would be watching what you were doing and go home and write it all down, including the jokes that you made, yeah. your mother's um, Christian name, and um, all the rest of the stuff that um, you pick up as you're traveling. Um, um, and you've completely managed to avoid the dreadful kind of Soviet-style canteens. No, I did canteens as well. Did you? Yeah, I did. How was that experience? Um, a lot of pink sausage and stuff, you know. <laughs> Yeah, dreadful. And in, in Romania, um, the, the official market was um, full of pink stuff and not many cabbages because they were sending those to Russia and they were rather cross about that. But the, around the back streets, people were unloading stuff out of the back of um, cars and things. So, you know, you could tell what, what the preoccupation was, what people really wanted to eat. And yeah. That becomes pretty obvious. And the other trick, of course, is you go into a supermarket and you go and look and see what's in the frozen food section or in the cans, because that's what people really, that's their everyday, what they like to eat. Yeah. So it kind of tells you lots of information. Would you like to do one? Yeah. Thank you. OK, here's some spoons here. So does this look right, the consistency? It probably is a little bit thicker with the cheese that you would have encountered in Hungary. Yeah, it looks pretty but, good. Yeah, it's yeah, good? Yeah. OK, uh -huh. so I've just got this really uneven circle. Let's just make it a little bit neater. We need a bit of water to fix it? Or? No, uh, this um, dough is actually very soft. So uh, because stick. I eyeballed it, it should be a little bit... It's, it just sticks. You don't need anything. Do that it finger just, thing when you clip it together with your fingers. It's just very easy. Look, it just sticks together because I made uh, quite a wet dough. Sorry. <laughs> but so, here we are. But they will be very nice to eat because the softer the dough, the nicer they are when you boil them. So beautiful. what I'm doing is just making a crescent, right? Yeah. And then... Uh, and and then, you've done a little patterned one, haven't yeah, you? Yeah, and I wanted to show you how to do this uh, action. So you just grab it by the edge and then... Oh. I've got cream on my <laughs> fingers, which would not be a good thing. And okay. then, so the first one, we just grab this corner and basically you just want each corner to go alongside where the filling ends and kind of the empty dough begins. 
So I'm, I'm just kind of like sending it over my thumb. Okay. And and kind of using my finger to push it down. Okay. Just like this. So you're just making a twist, so... basically. You're just twisting it. Yeah. Yeah, you're doing it. It's a bit bigger than yours. Maybe my fingers are a bit bigger. You're, to, you're tiny Well, hand. you know, when I teach dumpling making, I always say, look, even the simplest technique that where you think that they will all look the same, they don't. They, they don't. look so different because, of course, we're all individual. And, and it's people a will thing. know who's done what, won't they? Exactly. Which I is... love it. It looks gorgeous. Probably better be here. Just keep it, it there. Keep, yeah. <laughs> keep your dumpling there. Um, Perfect. I'll give you another one. Do you want to do it again? Yeah, why not? Yeah, this is fun, isn't it? It's just such a lovely thing to do. As you say, you know, people do it together. I'll give you this I one. I need a bit of flour. Some flour. Yeah, this is what yeah. just put it there. And this we can do for hours. We can just stand here discussing where we've been and what we've done. Exactly. And you did all the, you went back home, didn't you? To do the um, summer kitchens. So for summer kitchens, yes. Um, and you know, not unlike you, uh, also traveled around the country. You know what, I, mu I must kind of um, ad ad adopt your uh, technique, your watercolors technique. That is such a lovely way to make friends. Are you doing it make now? Friends. You're taking a... No, I am doing a lot at home, but I haven't done it. You know, obviously I haven't been able to travel yet. But um, but yeah, we, we, we did about 10,000 kilometers all over Ukraine and went into people's summer kitchens. Summer and, kit, yeah. yeah and what we, time we of year were you there? Uh, mainly spring, summer, and just the beginning of autumn. So the, the yeah. season when the summer kitchens obviously are used. Because it's not just summer food, is it? It's, it's preparing food for winter. Well, exactly, yes. And have you encountered that during yes. your travels? Yeah. Have you um, seen the them? The main preoccupation in when the weather's good is to stock it up for um, when it's not. Yeah. Particularly in the north, because um, the growing season's so short. I don't know what it is in the Ukraine, but certainly it, there's nothing much coming up in, our, in gardens in the Britain until about... May, something like that. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I guess similar in Ukraine as well. Yeah, May will get our first kind of like fresh produce. But oh, yeah, but... Do people go home at Easter to plant potatoes? Uh, yeah. 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 It, it's because um, it's such it's a, a thing. It's a practical as well as a look, I made a nice little round. Oh, that's perfect. Okay. Look at you. <laughs> okay. I know. Brilliant. It's very look. good. But you can stuff them more. Than I do. I don't risk as much stuffing as you yeah, do. Yeah, yeah. I'm. Uh, and that's a skill, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. Well, I don't know if it's always the good thing because they do unravel if you overstuff them. But I'm, I'm so greedy. I just want all the filling. Yeah, and it's so much nicer, <laughs> isn't it? So the wedding where, so you went to the wedding where yes, these were yes, served. Yes, all the way through, and, and there was lots of play acting. Right. Yeah. Tell me about that. That's interesting. Do you have play acting in in? So we have this really interesting thing um, where there's well the wedding is two days, yeah. And the second day, met all of the men uh, wear f women's clothing. Oh yes, no, there was that. The, 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 yeah, um, we call it the gypsy wedding, and it's um, yeah, and it's wonderful. It's really funny. I mean. The men just get really drunk and run around in wearing skirts. Wearing women's clothes, yeah. I know, it's a bit like sort of... Yeah. Yeah. I really wanted to do that, but also... But uh, that was um, disguise, that um, men came in in women's clothing for the bridegroom to choose which was his bride, and then the bride came in eventually. Is that where that comes from? I didn't know. That's yeah. so fascinating. But they're fun, aren't they? Oh, well, yeah. The weddings. And they're also um, shooing the bride. Very odd. Do you yes. know that one? Yeah, shooing the bride. <laughs> do you want to tell? So she doesn't about... run around and <laughs> yeah, that's... get up to stuff behind the couch. That that's kind of really yeah. crazy. Yeah, I think people are stopping to do this now. But yeah. <laughs> and, uh, uh, what other food were they serving? Um, there would have been chicken because there always is. Yeah. And the, um, the there were chicken? noodles yes. too. So um, just cut noodles. So the same, the same paste. And, yeah. then, and the weddings happen in the spring because then you've got food. Yeah. So you got the first curd from the cow. Yeah. So, and you didn't have it in before then. So it has to be May, something like that. Yeah. That's the reason for May weddings. And um, no greenery for some reason. No. It, it, that maintains, I mean, until quite recently, all over. 
No green stuff. Uh, no vegetables. Oh, really? <laughs> yes, no vegetables. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. <laughs> uh, hmm. I don't know. Green has a sort of funny connotation, doesn't it? Uh, it it's, uh, oh, no, I didn't know that. That's really interesting. So it's... Uh, and it's... Uh, I think it goes back to pagan times. It does. Huh. It does. So people have these ideas about what's right and what's wrong. Yeah. And you can see when somebody looks at what you're doing and they think, ah, oh, <laughs> she comes from somewhere else. I was in Greece mm -hmm. um, with a whole American um, group of people, you know, chefs and food writers and things like that, about 80 of us. And um, we were in Thessalonica on that... Um, Peninsula, and we were being shown uh, first of all how to build a bread oven, how to bake bread in the bread oven, right, and then how to fry vegetables, aubergines. Yeah, and um, there was a somebody hadn't turned up, so there was a, a vacant stall. You know, there were about half a dozen women, and then there was this vacant stall. Any um, any uh, volunteers? Yes, yes, yes. I say yes, yes, yes. And so I went forward and started frying the aubergine slices, dipping them in flour, dipping them in... Actually, yeah. they did flour and then water rather than... Yeah. I'd have done egg and then... Anyway, so... And they all stopped and looked at me and started laughing. And I said, why are you laughing? And they said, because you're frying like a Spaniard. Which, of course, I was. And I have no idea, you know, why... Because I'd copied exactly what my companions had been doing. Yeah. But they still knew that I was frying like a Spaniard. That's so fascinating. <laughs> it is. It, it's the, the slate of hand is very much um, personal and yep. to somewhere. So what you're doing now is what you're used to, and you're a bit uncomfortable if I've moved you out of it into another one, aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so the water is on, slightly salted. We need to melt some butter, and of course, you know, back at home in Ukraine as well, when my grandma would make very similar dumplings. You know, you'd have something that we called krinichka, which, which means a little well. But essentially, it was almost like half a pack of butter. In yeah, there. the more butter, you know, the better. Yeah, <laughs> they're just, so we're going to bathe our dumplings in butter as well. Um, and I am going to do half a pack. Why not? We're just going to switch it on. And then, of course, uh, we're going to sprinkle some sugar on them. And you know what? Now I use a little bit of maple syrup. I know that it's, this is do not it, traditional, it. Yeah, no. but um, we don't have any today. But, <laughs> but at <laughs> home, but at home if, you know, if people don't want to use sugar because, well, sugar is the enemy now. So just a little bit of honey or maple or something honey like that. Honey would be good. And nice. honey must have preceded honey. it. That right? must have been the... Um, what was used before... Originally, before yeah. sugar, before yeah. refined sugar. Yeah, exactly. And also, I think that the mixture with the poppy seeds, and that is a kind of dusting. Yeah. Rather than a, a, a syrupy sweetening. Yeah. So the water is boiling, and I'm just going to pop them in, and because the filling is pretty much cooked, we're just waiting for the pasta to cook, which is going to take yeah. two minutes, two to three minutes, until they pop on top, as you just said. Here you are. Okay, so we'll put them in. <clears throat> Is that, does that the work? The butter is nice and melted. I'm just going to switch it off. Yeah, that should work. Uh, the dumplings are in. And it's actually oh, such a nice there. dough because it sticks to itself, doesn't it? It does. No, exactly. Um, so I'm just going to give it a swirl so they don't stick to the bottom of the pan. And maybe just increase the temperature a little bit just so they cook quickly. And then we'll just take them out, pour some butter over them, a little bit of extra poppy seed. And this, you would, the extra dough, you would roll out, cut into little shapes, yep. probably diamond squares. Yep. And then uh, I'm sure you, again, that's because it's a, it's a pasta dough. It is. is. Yeah. So... Uh, and then you'd have another dish with that, and that would be served with the exactly. soup. Exactly. So they are, these are called vareniki, where I come from, in the south of Ukraine. And my <laughs> grandma would call these off-cuts varenichki, which means the little Little varenichi. bits. Yeah, the yeah. Little, little bits. Little bits, yeah. Yeah. So these were literally two minutes away. Got some butter. And I can't wait to taste these, Elizabeth. I've never tried these before with poppy seeds. So this is all very, very them, exciting. Um, boiled, have you, or not? Always yeah, baked. of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, we do them exactly in the same way, but we we don't use uh, poppy seeds. So I'm really excited about the addition of poppy seeds. 
It'll be beautiful. It's uh, a fertility symbol. There we are. Gorgeous. T t tell me about your no, paintings. I have you got where some? We are. Have you still got some from that period, from yeah. when you yes, travelled around? Have. Yeah, I keep masses of them. This is. Let's see. Uh, oh, I know where it is. It's Abergavenny, so it's quite close to home. And this is what I use. You've seen me use that before. Yes, I you? have. They're absolutely gorgeous, Elizabeth. Such a lovely way to um, kind of break the ice and start a conversation, aren't they? Gorgeous. I love these breads. Oh, it's sort of, so it, nice. it means it's, it's a friendly medium. It's not like a camera, as I say. It's, yeah. um, you know, and people come and watch. And actually, um, when paint goes on paper, yeah. it's really shiny. So you can take advantage of that. It's like a cartoon, you know, that the children will come and watch and then their parents will come. And then they will and then tell you the recipes and the stories. What you're doing, and then yeah. you get a story. It's fantastic. Amazing. <laughs> oh, it was such a pleasure to hear about all of these. I, you know, I almost, I feel, I wish that I, even though I lived there at the time, but I wish that I could have seen everything that my grandmother used to do and my mom used to do with the eyes that I have now, you know, haven't been yes. taken out of Ukraine and, you know, you just appreciate all of those little details so much more. I wish that I asked my grandma so many more questions. I think and the fact that you, you watched her when you were little, did you? I did, but, you know, just impatiently, just waiting to be fed. So I don't think if, if those little bits kind of went in as much as they would have done now, but of course, you know, she passed away when I was 12. So, yeah, I really regret so not, so not asking yeah. more questions for mm. sure. So you telling me all of these stories, I don't know, it's bringing her back to life a little bit, I think, as well. So it's really nice. Thank you. Uh, these are done. So I'm just going to take them out and we're going to address them with our gorgeous melted butter and poppy seeds. You could drop them in a chicken broth. You know, but actually these are sweet anyway, so... Yeah, but the, the filling the, isn't. So they, they, these, I mean, probably not traditional, but you could serve them with some crispy onions or something as a savoury thing. You know, it doesn't have to be... It's yeah. quite a versatile filling, I find. And the dough, of course, is just gorgeous. These are going to be so well, silky dough, to eat. The dough is just the one that you get all over Europe. Yeah. You know, it's either made with water on its own or a proportion of egg or... All egg, and this is virtually all egg, and sometimes just with yolks. Yeah. Oh, look at that. Ha ha ha. <laughs> Where's the? Um... I'm not putting as much as my grandma would, but okay. Uh, and then this, and a, bit, a little bit of uh, sugar. A bit of nutmeg. And a little bit of nutmeg. Or did we put the nutmeg in the stuffing? Can't remember. I, I put a little bit in the stuffing, but I mean, there's no harm. Shall I do a little bit? Yep. Just a little flourish of nutmeg and just a little bit of sugar. But of course, as I say, you, you can use honey and that will be really nice as well. Just a tiny little sprinkling here. Okay, traditional Hungarian poppy seed dumplings. Voila, they smell amazing. Thank you. Oh, thank you so much, Elizabeth. It was such a pleasure. Um, I loved making these with you. And thank you for sharing your story. And I've learned how to do the edge now. Well, More you have, but you already knew how to do that. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, you very much, Ollie. Lovely to see you anyway. Thank you.